We're going to go over some basic troubleshooting techniques with a multimeter and other devices to check your components on your model railroad. So let's get started with this right now. I'm Tom Kovicek and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And in the past couple of weeks, I've been getting some emails from viewers who said they bought some um, train sets on eBay and were having problems with them. They're not running and they wanted me to troubleshoot them for them. And I said, well, I'll show you how to do it. I tried to step through it with uh, through emails, but it's kind of hard doing it that way. So I'm going to do a video on it showing you how to troubleshoot problems on your model railroad. And basically, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do it on a train set to see if you got power on the tracks to see if the locomotive is working and other things that you want to take into consideration these people have bought train sets on ebay thinking that they were good apparently they don't work and one of them said that they contacted the seller and the seller says well you're not hooking it up right and i just <laughs> i just wrote back to him i says well that's the canned excuse from everybody to sell something you're not hooking it up right but uh, I know these people are hooking it up right because they stepped me through some of the things that they've done already and uh, it, it appears that they are doing it right so I'm going to go through this and show you how to troubleshoot to see if your locomotive is working to see if your power pack is working to see if your wires are working and um, I have some back here I have the locomotive and I have the, the easy track. Now, the ones that they were talking about were Bachman and one person showed me a, a power supply. It's a little bit different than this one, but I'm gonna use this one because this is the Bachman one I have. And I'll, I'll show you some of the MRC ones I have too and show you how to troubleshoot with those also. So if you would like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and Go to my channel, click right below the video where it says Tom's Trains and Things, click on that and that'll take you to my channel page and click on playlists. And that will show you all the playlists that I have. I have them grouped into different categories by topic so it's easy to find so if you're looking for something on soldering you can find it if you're looking for electrical projects you could find it if you're looking for dcc you'll find it i have over 40 playlists on there where the videos are grouped into categories so you could find them easily so take a look at it and let's get started with this with the multimeter. Since this is a model railroading for beginners episode, I'm going to do this for DC only. I'm not going to be doing DCC troubleshooting. So this is going to be for DC only, and we're going to use a multimeter. It doesn't have to be one like this. It could be a less expensive one. You could pick one up anywhere, hardware stores, Walmart, anywhere, even on my Amazon shop store. I have a few multimeters on there. And we're going to use this Bachman one here. And you can see it has the plugs in the back for the power for the little uh, wall wart. And it has a plug right here for the track power. Now, most of the problems that I think that everybody was having was whether to find out if the transformer was bad, if the wire was bad, or the connection on the track was bad, or the locomotive was bad. So we're going to cover all of those aspects right here. The first thing I'm going to show you is about the locomotive. I have a steam locomotive here that I picked up at a thrift store a few years ago. Um, there was many there were many items there. It looked like the uh, the modeler passed away and his wife unloaded everything at the thrift store. So I picked up quite a few locomotives and some buildings and some other supplies there. But I had no idea if they ran or not. Luckily, they all ran. One thing you could do if you go somewhere and you find a locomotive, even at a train show, take a 9-volt battery. Just a 9 volt battery and this is only going to work on DC and just put it now you can see on the tender here you have these little wipers on the wheels okay that is an indication that 
one set of wheels is is going to one track and the other set of wheels is making contact with the other track so you can't do it on here but do it on here and just put your 9 volt battery up there and just see if it turns now this is not going to give you anything for speed or how smooth it runs or anything like that but you'll be able to see if the locomotive runs and if there's anything stuck on there like you see if the the gears are stuck or anything like that so that's the number one thing to troubleshoot to see if your locomotive is working now don't try this on DCC because it won't work and you'll notice on DCC there'll be a little plate on the bottom and it'll say DCC on board so only on DC continuing with the locomotive if your tender has these wipers on it right here that means that one set of wheels is making contact with one track and the other set of wheels is making contact with the other track and I'm going to show you how to do this right here we're going to put this on ohms and I'm going to put my lead on this side right here and we're going to take this one right here and you'll see that you got 22.8 ohms okay that means you're going through the motor on this side here you got 0.3 ohms so that means these wheels right here and these wheels right here are on the same side of the motor these wheels over here are insulated so we're going to go over to the other side okay so we'll go on this one right here and it shows approximately 0.5 ohms so that means these wheels right here are making contact and these over here are not so you can see it says ol that means there's no continuity between here and here and let me put the probes on these wheels right here so I could show you these are metal wheels on here <clears throat> but if you look closely down in here you'll see that there's an insulator between the axle and the wheels so there's no continuity right there now on the locomotive itself you're going to see you're going to read the coil that's in the motor and you'll get some kind of reading on this one here it's 22.7 ohms so you know that there something is working there and all of this is without power on in the next couple of tests i'm going to do the same thing without power on but i'll go back to this battery right here and you'll see now if you get it in the right spot on the wheels you could run it for a little bit to test it out like that and you could see that it runs freely that we got a section of easy track right here and what i did um, i use this for many different things so i i cut this here but uh, I'll, I'll show you how to test it with this connected if you have a small piece of wire and we're going to check this connector right here you'll see that it has three slots in here the center one isn't being used so you put this little jumper between the two if you didn't have this thing disconnected now i have these little attachments on here but what you would do you would put these on your plug and that one that one's a little bit big so i can't really do it and test it with this jumper on the back there to see if you have continuity if you have continuity on there and what it will do is figure out which 
plugs or which uh, pins on there are the good pins. Okay, so this back one is that wire right there. And then this wire right here should be the second one. So they're not even using the first plug on here. So though you're getting your power from right here and right here. So what you want to do, you could either do it this way. You can, you could do it two ways. You could leave this in here jumpered across both pins, but you got to make sure it's in there good and tight. And this is probably a bad example with this one because that's too small. Let me see if I have a wire. Is just take your meter and your probes and go like that. And if you read, and if you have a reading on there, and on this one you're not going to get it because I have it disconnected, but you'll see something like that. And that tells you that the wire is good, that your whole cable is good all the way up through to the plug. Now, if you don't get a reading and it looks like this, or you get something where it says mega ohms, then your wire is bad. Now the connectors on the track and it's basically the same thing. You just check one side with the track. Okay, so that this connection right here goes to that track. That's good. This connection right here goes to that track. And we could do the same thing on the other side. This connection right here to that track. This connection right here to this track. Now, one other problem that you might have, and you might have dirty contacts here and here. So when you're doing this right here, you're not getting good contact. So, and we see that's 9 ohms, and that's good. Come over to the other wire. And 10.9 ohms. And re you realize that you're going to be doing this through the plug, through the things on the plug, because I have the wire right here. So, you see, all of this is good. You might have a little bit of... Uh, uh, dirt or something in there because you've seen that the resistance on one uh, wire to the track was lower than the other one. One with the higher resistance you may have a little bit of, of uh, dirt in the contact. So what I would suggest if you you could either spray some alcohol in there and there's hardly anything that uh, that will fit down in there but you might be able to take that same wire and and just scrape down in there with that wire and that might just shine it up a little bit to get good contact in there but i wouldn't worry about it if it's just you know uh that you know one ohm or a half an ohm or something like that if it was like 30 ohms or something then i would worry about it but with you know that little bit i wouldn't worry now, we know that the locomotive's good, the track's good, the wire's good, and if it still doesn't run, then we can assume that the transformer is bad. Now, the way that we can check that is we'll have to plug it in. Now I have power on this little transformer here, and I have my probes on the wires, but if you're, you're going to be troubleshooting it, you could even bring this over to here, plug this in to the track and then test the tracks itself. But I'm going to do this. Now, putting it here is the same thing as putting my probes on a track. So you'll take a look at the meter. I have it set on DC. And as I increase the throttle, you'll see that the voltage increases on it. So that means the the power pack is good. Now, whenever I change direction on this, you'll see that it changes to a negative. 
and I'll bring it back down and shut it off. And you'll have residual power in because there's capacitors in here and it'll slowly drop down because right now what you're doing you're bleeding off the capacitors that's inside the power pack. I just showed you how to test the basic components to see if it does work and if you have a problem to be able to identify what that problem is. All right, I have a couple of more transformers here. I have a Tech 2 uh, 2500 and I have an Ampac and Model 402. Now, I have the Tech 2 plugged in. I don't have this one plugged in. I'm not going to plug in every one of them, but just to show you basically everything is the same on there. On the back of this one, there's an extra set of terminals. You have fixed DC, accessories AC, and variable DC. The variable DC is going to be what you're going to hook up to your tracks. And so I'm just going to hook these leads up right here to show you if I can get them to stick on there on the screw while I'm testing this without having to hold it all the way. I might have to hold it a little bit, but I'll turn the power on right here and I'll increase on the throttle. And you can see as I increase, the voltage increases all the way up to 18, almost 18 and a half volts. Now I'll switch the direction on here and it'll, and you'll lose the minus on there. So I'm going to go over to fixed DC and this is a like 19 and a half and I'll go over to the AC and the AC says uh, 20 okay 15 just under 16 volts so basically everything the same on a power pack it doesn't matter what the brand is or how big it is or how small it is. You're going to have basically the same thing. This one has track DC and accessories. It doesn't have the fixed DC on it. And, you know, just on some of them, you're going to have uh, three sets of terminals. But most of them, you're just going to have two sets of terminals. You're going to have the variable DC for your throttle and the AC for the accessories. So that's basically what you have to do to check on them with the meter to make sure that they are working properly. Now in future episodes, I'll show you how to do more troubleshooting on your model railroad in DC and later on in DCC. If you have any questions or comments about specific problems that you're having, leave a comment down below or else you could contact me through my email, Tom's Trains and Things at gmail.com. I have to think about it. Or else you could uh, go on my website and go on the contact page and you can leave a message on there also and that will send me an email that I'll be able to respond back to you. So if you have any questions about this or any other troubleshooting about DC on your model railroad, just go ahead, leave a comment or leave me an email and I'll be happy to help you out with that. So that's this one for right now and we'll have more on troubleshooting DC and later on DCC. So thank you.